welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This is our new reconfigured set for EP Live, which airs at 1.30 p.m. PST, 4.30 p.m. EST. So please come back later today and join us for that. We've got a rundown to get to, though, and we've got to thank a very recent sponsor, DCGX. Thank you so much for supporting EPN and our rundown. This one's for you. Rockstar's highly anticipated Red Dead Redemption 2 might finally be riding into town this summer. The release date for the game might have been leaked a little early. Amazon's Mexican site has listed the game as coming out on July 12th, and at the time we're filming this, the date is still up on the page. This could mean that Amazon jumped the gun and revealed the release date ahead of schedule, and if it really does come out in Mexico on July 12th, it would likely arrive the same day in the rest of North America. Rockstar themselves haven't made any announcements, and other websites haven't leaked a release date yet, but we'll let you know when that changes. We do know that Rockstar is planning to have the game out sometime in the first half of this year. It was originally slated to arrive last year, but was pushed back into the first half of 2018. Red Dead Redemption 2 is the first game in the series in more than eight years, and will give players an even bigger and more realistic version of the Old West to explore. It will also have a huge online component, similar to Rockstar's last big game, GTA V, so expect it to get a steady stream of updates well after launch. We'll have more on Red Dead Redemption 2 as soon as new details come in. It's official, the Nintendo Switch is the fastest selling console of all time, pretty much everywhere. A few weeks ago, Nintendo announced that the Switch has sold 4.8 million units in the US in its first eight months, making it the fastest selling console of all time in the country. Now the system has claimed the same record north of the border. Nintendo has revealed that the Switch is also the fastest selling console of all time in Canada. They haven't revealed specific sales figures, but say they've seen record-breaking sales that are the strongest for the first 10 months of any video game system in Canadian history. This means the Switch has beaten the previous record holder, the original Wii, which first hit stores in 2006. And this is especially good news for Nintendo given the failure of their last system, the Wii U. Nintendo says that they hope to continue their momentum by releasing new games for the Switch throughout 2018, including an all-new Pokemon RPG, the No More Heroes spin-off Travis Strikes Again, and the recently announced cardboard construction game Labo due in April. The Switch isn't the only Nintendo hardware flying off the shelves because the handheld 3DS and 2DS are still going strong. Nintendo of America has revealed that December 2017 was the best month of sales for the system since December 2014, when it was just a few years old. The resurgence in popularity is likely due to recent exclusives like Metroid Samus Returns, not to mention new versions of the 3DS itself that hardcore fans and collectors want to get their hands on. Nintendo has previously stated that they plan to stop making new games for the 3DS at the end of this year, which means a new handheld system is likely on the way, although these numbers might make them want to reconsider. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is getting another TV series this summer. The new show Cloak & Dagger, based on the comic characters of the same name, is set to premiere on June 7th. In the US, the show is slated to air on the Disney-owned Freeform network, although international distributors have yet to be revealed. Like the recent Hulu series Runaways, Cloak & Dagger is aimed at a teenage demographic, focusing on a pair of high school students who discover that they have superhuman powers. One can control light and the other controls darkness. It's worth pointing out that in the comics, the Cloak & Dagger characters have often been associated with the X-Men, which until now have been off-limits for a Disney-produced show. However, Disney is currently in the process of acquiring X-Men rights holder 20th Century Fox, so when the acquisition is complete, they could potentially use X-Men characters in the show. We'll just have to wait and see. Over in the DC Universe, the Justice League won't be getting any new superpowers, at least not anytime soon. Warner Brothers has revealed that the new superhero ensemble film will be available to buy digitally on February 13th and hit DVD and Blu-ray a month later on March 13th. The problem is that this will just be the plain old theatrical cut of the movie. Many fans were hoping to get an extended director's cut, possibly one that would maintain the original creative vision of credited director Zack Snyder, who didn't supervise the final theatrical cut. There are rumors that a darker, more serious Snyder version of the film does exist in some form or another, but that's no guarantee that it will ever see the light of day. Snyder's last film, Batman vs. Superman, did get an extended cut on home video, so there's a chance that Warner Brothers might release one down the line. Either way, hopefully the extended cut will be a bit better. Justice League was critically panned and underperformed at the box office, so there's a lot of room for improvement. That's rude. Lara Croft is looking a lot better in her new movie. 
The latest trailer for the new Tomb Raider film has arrived, giving viewers a new taste of what to expect. It shows Lara Croft doing all the jumping, exploring, and bad guy fighting that she does in the game, and looks a lot more like a Tomb Raider adventure than the first trailer, which was met with skepticism from fans. The story will see her travel to an uncharted island to uncover the secrets of what happened to her missing father, and the look and feel is heavily inspired by the 2013 reboot of the game franchise. Unlike that game, it looks like the film is actually going to have a few tombs in it, though. Go figure. Open the tomb! Hollywood doesn't exactly have the best track record when it comes to adapting video games. To this day, the most successful video game adaptation is the original Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider movie, so the producers of this one are hoping it will be an even bigger success. What do you think of the new Tomb Raider? Are you excited, or does it look like another lame video game adaptation? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching The Rundown. Remember, we make this every day, and starting on Monday, The Rundown is gonna be live and part of EP Live, so please join us for that. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Remember, we've got tons of other content for you to check out, so please do, and if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.